so great to have you sharing here today. I'm going to pass the mic over to you and allow you to share your screen. Tell us a little bit about your journey and the initiatives that you've got started. Wonderful, thank you. We acknowledge Papa Tuanuku, our Mother Earth, and honour our spiritual, cultural and historical values of our manawa whina and Indigenous knowledge in, our, in guiding our learning for sustainability. Thank you. Sustainability developments and highlights. We began separating waste, auditing and changing to, to more sustainable practices. Uh, one way that we did this was um, Miss Rivers got a uh, day's waste and left it outside the chapel for girls to walk past as they went into chapel. And so that was just a real phys physical embodiment of how much waste we're using. And so after that, we cut down our waste by 58% in one year. And we've done 14% more since this. So our sustainability initiatives in 2024, we are looking to explore uh, solar energy. We want to get some solar panels at Rangi. We think that would be pretty amazing and a great legacy to lead mm -hmm. as a group. Uh, we want to extend our on-site pa harakeke, uh, continue with native planning along Hewitt's and Miraval Lane Road because you know it looks pretty amazing out there now that we've got those plants. Uh, we're going to keep planting fruit trees, continue growing fruit and vegetables in the in the use of artificial lawn, we've got some lovely big lawns at Rangi, so we're very proud of those. Uh, we've recently put in a new boulder copper butterfly uh, garden, and we've also grown uh, many native plants on site, and we're getting rat traps uh, as well. <laughs> so cleaning up water waste, this is something that we take part in every year, so it is the mother of all cleanups, and so it's usually the day before Mother's Day. And what we do is we get students from Rangi uh, this year, I think we had about 20, 25 students. And so on a Saturday morning, we all get together with high vis trash bags and gloves, lots of gloves. And we pick up rubbish from around Kerr's Reach. And I think it's a really cool initiative because I'm someone that spends a decent amount of time at Kerr's Reach as a rower. So it's always nice to be able to uh, remove some of the waste that you see around there because there is so much. And we always come away with very full trash bags. Um, so that's a really cool initiative that we have. So green market. So this is a very big thing for us at Rangi. It's the biggest sustainability event that we have during the year, probably. And successful. And very yeah. successful. So this year what we did is we got our school clans, our school houses. We got made a little competition between them to see which students could bring in the most amount of clothes from each clan. And then we gave them points, which go towards our house cup at the end of the year. So that was really good because we had a lot of clothes brought in for donation. And then what we do is we sort through the clothes clothes and we figure out what is you know of high enough quality to sell and to donate and then we sort the clothing price it and then we resell it to the girls and so they love this it's always very jam-packed and we often sell other little things alongside it like we had cookie dough and baking and sometimes we'll have honey and we'll have other um, young enterprise uh, objects on for sale uh, this year, I think we raised over $1,500. A large amount, um, amount of that money was donated to the Eco Action Nursery Trust and also to other you know, little councils within our school, like Edible Gardens. Um, so that's a really, really cool event, and we love doing that. And any leftover clothing that we don't sell gets donated to the city mission, um, and they love that. And yeah, yeah, it's really cool, upcycling and reselling clothes. Okay, so this is me. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, so I'm the head of the Reuse Depot here at Rangi. And basically, just like in a nutshell, the Reuse Depot is like a recycling centre for the school. And so it's open like 24-7. And families of Rangi and the students can bring in like basically any items. So like egg cartons, jars, paper, old clothes, um, books, uh, stationery, yeah, name it, it'll probably be there. Um, and then basically it's about recycling and also repurposing as well. So I redistribute them to different businesses around Christchurch. So like there's old bras, they can go to this company called Bras and Things. Uh, no, not Bras and Things. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I forgot the name of it. Anyway, um, it is okay. So yeah, we'll just go on there. 
And then this is like our little cool values that I run it off. And then I've created some barcodes, um, just so you can see on there. And then, yeah. Oh yeah, Project Uplift, that's it. <laughs> and then Creative Junk as well. And yeah, it's a really good way to be able to encourage recycling and also just giving new purpose and new life to items that would otherwise just be chucked in the bin because um, landfill is a really big issue at the moment. And that's why I really wanted to be the head of this particular area because I find it quite interesting and a thing that we need to really focus on in this modern world is about trying to find new ways of giving life to old things instead of creating new things. So yeah, let's continue. And then this is what it looks like at the moment. I'm still just in the process of organizing it and finding the best uh, like, what's the word, like system. Um, but so far it's going good, yeah. And we got wrapped up there. Thank you, Shereen. So I think this is something that we've only just done this year. Yeah. So we've got involved in rat trapping. And so we've begun uh, trapping rats on site and recording data on the predator-free New Zealand. And so we're wo um, working alongside a team from predator-free Brickton, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Had a couple so far. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a few in the nursery. Mm, yeah. Yep. And then the boulder copper bluff to fly garden um, that we have. So we have sort of this braided river outside the front of the school, which we've got some um, the the plants, the butterfly, the plants that the butterflies like. Um, we've got them growing in the rocks. And then we've also got a bigger one back in the nursery. And it's really cool to see all the butterflies um, flitting around the nursery and in the summer with the lovely sunshine and they love to just like sunbathe on the rocks and it's really pretty. Yeah. At Rangi, uh, we definitely really want to keep teaching students, especially younger students who are going to come through the school and end up in our positions later on. We want to teach them about waste reduction and what we can do uh, to reduce our waste. So we have, uh, you know, school-wide education programs that year seven and year nine are involved in. So those are our um, sustainability rotations. And we do a lot of those with the service council. Um, we also, uh, as a school, attend lots of uh, seminars that are available to us. And so that's uh, posters of what it looks like for us, staff and sustainability days in year nine, um, sustainability orientations. I'm lucky enough, I'm part of the student leadership team at Rangi, which is made up of eight girls, including myself. So it's a head girl, and then that's the other um, six councils within Rangi. And so because of that, we get given these little journals that um, have got information on the inside coming from previous leaders in our position. So I've got a journal that has got what Jess Glass, who was head of sustainability last year, and it's got what she planned out for Green Market. And so that really helps to just sort of have an outline. Kia ora. I work at Binside and one of my jobs for next year is to introduce some sustainability content into, we're going to have um, an ARCL program, which I think is similar to what you guys have, but you probably call it something else. Do you have any suggestions of things that your students really like or you think it's really beneficial for them to know that would help me decide what to include? I think Oh, do you want to go? So is this like an educational program or like workshops or planting? What is planting? educational? So it would be classroom based and it would be just every teacher would be responsible for delivering it. So not expert teachers. Like whānau time, I guess. Maybe you guys call it whānau time. So like the equivalent of that. I think the best way um, to do it is to make it engaging because yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people, especially younger students, when they hear, you know, you're going to sit and learn about rubbish, they kind of go, oh, great, mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. So we just try our best to make it engaging. I think we've done cahoots. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> loves a good cahoots. Or like a sorting activity. If you were like to sort rubbish into different bins. Yeah. yeah. And sort yeah. of do it like that. That's that one that great. definitely makes a big impact as well because you get a number of items and you can, you know, have them cut out and then you can have a timeline and it can be how many years do you think it takes for these to biodegrade? And yeah. it'll be really cool. It's really cool to yeah. see the girls like, 
you know, figure out what they think takes the longest amount of time to biodegrade, and then it's not what they think. And, you know, it's quite yeah, shocking. Away. <laughs> yeah, they, they tend to be quite blown away by it. And they're like, wow, okay, that, you know. Yeah. I mean, I didn't realize my cup of noodles took like 2,000 years to <laughs> yeah. biodegrade. So I think that's really cool. And yeah, also like just, just interactive things. Interactive, yeah. even yeah. reward based stuff, you yeah. know. Yeah. 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 We yeah. tend to yeah. wave around fruit bursts a lot yeah. because yes. they like those. Um, <laughs> But yeah, just making it sort of relaxed and fun and not, um, I'm not saying it comes across in an attacking way, but just making it, you know, sort of easy going for everyone because I think a lot of people are quite, you know, wary about that sort of side of things because they don't want to find out that they've been doing something awful and wrong with their rubbish and the way they recycle or anything. So just making it like a positive learning experience. Yeah. Yeah. Great, thank well, you. Just going to close us with a karakia to bless you to see you all on your way for the a great evening and rest of the afternoon. Unu here to Paul, to Paul for the marama, to Mokia to Ao, to Ao Fatu Tangata, Tatai Kironga, Tatai Kiraru, Tatai Ahura, Homi, Tai Kie. We cannot thank you enough, and there'll be a little something arriving in the mail or at the offices for your generous time and expertise. Bye to our co-hosts. Bye. 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 Bye.